Hello viewers, so welcome back. So in this video we will concentrate on SAP GRC Access Risk Analysis. As you all know, SAP GRC Access Risk Analysis is a critical module and when we go for interview, most of the questions are from the ARA module. So let us try to understand the basic concepts of ARA along with the interview questions and common issues whatever we face via this video. Okay. Again, I'm telling in all videos, I'm repeating it again. It is not that interviewer will ask same questions always and they may not expect the same answers. So it is just only for the knowledge sharing purpose. Okay, let us start with the fundamental and basic question of ARA. First question is, what is a risk? It's a very simple question, but actually what is a risk? The straightforward answer is in generally, a risk is nothing but uh, an event or activity, whichever causes a loss to an organization or which may lead to a fraud that is called a risk but in SAP GRC what is a risk so in SAP GRC a risk is nothing but a combination of an individual function or a set of functions which when assigned to a user causes a loss to an organization that means if a user has given two different activities and a user performs two conflicting activities, this may lead to a risk. The next question we face is, what is a function? So a function is nothing but a group of activities. Just like order to cash is one function, procure to pay is one function in SAP. Now in SAP GRC, what is a function? A function is a set of actions and permissions which can be done by that user when you are assigned to that particular user. Now, example, if I take vendor master maintenance is one of the function. What does this function contains? This function contains all the actions that is a T codes related for the vendor master created maintenance and along with the authorizations. If we dig deep, then what is an action? What is a permission? Action is nothing but simply we can say it is a T code, but it's not always T code. It might be any Fiori app or web dentro application or even RFC enabled function modules also. But most of the cases, action is nothing but the T code. So if I consider, as I said, vendor master maintenance as a function, then actions will have the T codes which gives you uh, access to create the vendor master. Now, when you give a T code, automatically the related authorizations also will be pulled. So that authorizations will come under permissions tab. So a permissions is nothing but the authorizations. So what all the authorizations you have maintained for the particular T code or the Fiori app in SU24, that all will be pulled and that will be shown under the permissions tab. Okay, we know what is the risk, what is the function and what are actions and permissions. Then how the rules are created. The rules are created by generating the risks or functions. So we need to create a risk our functions and that in that actions and permissions and then we need to generate the uh, risk then only the rules will be created where are all these rules are stored it is under rule set a rule set is nothing but a set of all the rules so how many rule sets do we have by default sap grc will give you the default rule set called global and our company can make use of this global rule set directly if it is suitable to it or we can do any custom changes to the global rule set or you can create your own rule set as well. Is there any criteria that we need to create only one or two rule sets? No, you can create as many as rule sets you require. Here we need to remember one point in the rule set. The rules are generated only if the risk status is active. If any risk, whichever has a status as an active, the rules are not generated and it will be not part of the rule set. So while we are generating the rules, we need to make sure that the status of the risk is active. So most frequently as one more question is how many types of risks do we have in SAP GRC? In SAP GRC, the risks are majorly classified as three types, SOD risk, critical action risk and critical permission risk. Can you explain them? Yeah. SOD segregation of duties as the name itself is telling uh, it is a conflict of two different activities when assigned to the user will give you the risk example create vendor and payment to a vendor so what if the user is having an access to create vendor T codes and the user is also having access to the T codes which are used to do payment to the vendor then that causes a risk and that is called SOD risk 
how can i eliminate this risk so single user should not have access to this both functions in that way we can eliminate this sod risk is it that only two functions should be there no you can have two or more as well but minimum two functions two conflicting functions should be there in sod risk then what is critical action and critical permission critical action is nothing but a risk highlights even having a single action that is single function only that is some sensitive t code or sensitive fury app like se38 scc for this t code itself is a risk where the access cannot be provided to the users for these t codes in the production system that is categorized as critical action risk then what about critical permission risk whatever the access they have but the authorizations there are some critical authorizations so that authorization should not be assigned to the user in the production if i consider s underscore develop this is one critical authorization this s underscore develop with a debug object with 0 2 will give the access to change the code so which should not be given in the production so this is categorized as a critical permission risk so even critical permission risk will have only one function and it includes the authorizations critical which should not be given so on an overview sod is a risk which occurs because of conflicting functions either two or more functions whereas critical action and critical permission are having only single functions but which holds the actions or the permissions which are critical and which causes the risk next the most important question what is the process of creation of a risk so process of creation of risk involves multiple steps first step is we need to define business process so business process are required to organize our reports so like finance procurement purchase like that we need to create one business process first after creating the business process we need to define the rule set if you want to use the standard rule set need not to define it but if you want to create a custom rule set first define your custom rule set just rule set is nothing but give the name and definition that's it later we need to create the functions so we need to create the functions and in each function we need to add the actions that is a t codes or fury apps etc and in the permissions the authorizations related to this t codes will be pulled up what all you want to check which authorizations you want to check it is not that every time all the authorizations are risk display authorization is not a risk so that we need not to check it so we can make it as inactive wherever we have changes or create access for any authorizations or for different movement types etc uh, document types such things we can make it as active in the permissions so this need to be done very carefully so what all the authorizations whichever we feel it causes a risk that need to be made active and there is one class like and or or condition that also we need to carefully do that and means you are checking both of them or means either of them so this way we will create the functions how many functions should i create that depends upon the your risk if you are creating a sod risk of conflicting two functions you need to create two functions if you are creating critical action or critical permission one function is enough so we created a functions now the next important step is risk creation so when you create a risk business process we need to identify we need to give the risk id we need to give the risk description the risk level whether it is high or low or whatever it is and what type of risk you are creating are you creating a sod risk or you are creating critical action risk or critical permission risk that all we need to give after giving that we need to assign the functions to this risk whatever we have created earlier if it is sod two or more if it is ca or cp one function we will assign and one thing we need to remember here is whenever you are creating a critical permission risk whatever the function you are including in this risk must have only permissions by any chance if that function is having actions system will throw you an error so this is one class we need to remember while creating the critical function risk 
Now we created the risk with all the required details and we assigned the functions to it. Now we need to inform the system under which rule set this risk should generate the rules. So we need to give the rule set also. Along with that there is a tab called risk owners where you can give the owners for this risk. So these are the fields which we need to fill while creating the risk. And once we save it, the risk creation is done. So we created the rule set, functions as well as the risk. Once you create the risk, will it work? Absolutely, it will not work. It is just a creation is done. Now I need to generate the rules for this risk. Select the risk, whatever you created, click on generate rules and either foreground or background. And once the rules are generated, these all rules will be stored under the rule set. Then only the rule set will be active and we can identify this newly created risks. This is the complete process of the risk creation and activation. I have created the rule set I am using tomorrow if I want to do multiple changes according to my requirement. How can I do that? So bulk changes we can do by downloading the rule set and re-uploading the rule set. Here most important type question is how many files we will get downloaded. So we will give the connector group and 10 files will be get downloaded. First file is business process. Second one is functions function business process mapping, function actions, functions permissions, risks, rule set, risk rule set, risk description and risk owners. These are all the 10 files. So initially we will download them in .txt files, text files and wherever we want to do any changes for the existing one or if you want to add any new entries, we will add in that files and then we will again upload here one thing we need to remember generally most of the time what happens is whenever we are downloading it and when we are changing it if you see activity is having 0102 so this before zeros are truncated in excel when you open it so we should be very much cautious so when you are opening this text file in the excel ensure that the leading zeros are not truncated compulsory make that field as text field and do the changes and then only you re-upload. Most of the times we forget this and as a result the complete rule set will be wasted. It will not work from the next day. That is the reason it is recommended to take a backup before we doing changes. So first we will download, we will take a copy of that and in other copy we will do the changes and we will upload it. So if by any chance something wrong has happened we can revert back the changes so this is how uploading and downloading the rule set will happen so this is all about the concept of uh, risk and few questions what interviewers will ask there are some common uh, questions interviewer ask based on our experience one is how to handle this false positive risk what is meant by this false positive risk Technically speaking, that is not a risk, but it is showing in the system as a risk. Then it is called false positive risk. So most of the time this may occur. So for that purpose, we need to carefully check the rule set properly, the definition of the risk, and then we need to uh, regenerate the rule set. And uh, second question most of the time they ask is, can you describe a scenario where you have to modify the standard rule set? and how you have done it. So there might be a lot many scenarios because the business may not consider what the standard risk itself is a risk. So their requirement might be there. So based on their requirements, we will take that standard risk. Either we do changes to that risk by creating a new custom functions and adding it or we will use that standard function itself and do the changes in the actions and permissions. That it is a call of the business. And one more important question, how do you ensure that this GRC rule set remains relevant and up to date with system changes? This is most important because what happens is generally uh, we will do changes in the production and we will forget to do changes in the development and quality. So when there is uh, dissimilarities in the rule sets in development quality and production, 
So the risk what populating in development will not populate in quality, will not populate in the production. So when there are changes are moving from development to production, role changes, etc., then it will be very difficult to trace out the risks. So it is recommended whenever we do changes to the rule set, it should be same across all the system landscape then only it is very easy for us to run the risk analysis and move the changes these are the few questions which are posed by the interviewers regarding era still there are a lot many questions regarding the risk analysis part and mitigations etc we will try to cover few more questions in the upcoming videos thank you